Yeah, hi, welcome to Red Men TV. Uh, Forest One, Liverpool nil, and um, a team with great European pedigree uh, coming out on top today over a team with great European pedigree, but no <sighs> skill, desire, I don't know. Uh, tough, it's just tough old game of football. Liverpool just at no point looked like they were going to get anything from that football match, let's be perfectly honest about it. I thought they, were, you know, they, they, they played within themselves, and I think deliberately initially in the first half, because we've seen this the last couple of games, I don't mind that. Be, be solid, be resolute, be hard to beat. And it is one of those random moments where the ball comes back off the post and the, our, our knees there to, to react and fair, fair play to him technically an ex-Liverpool player. Um, not today. Um, but Liverpool were, were always going to struggle to react and, and a lot of it for me boils down to the team. And I don't think there's much you can do with that team. There's clearly sports science at play, which I hate talking about. I, lo I genuinely loathe talking about that because you know we'd all just say put the best lads out on the pitch. You know We managed the squad really well in Rangers last week. But we had choices. We didn't have choices today. Jordan Henderson has to start on the bench. Trent has to start on the bench. But Milner was fine. Um, was actually pretty good at right back, to be fair. Uh, first start for Curtis Jones, who I thought was probably the one Liverpool player who covered himself in good. Him and Robbo, I thought, were, were absolutely tireless. But uh, And I'd, I would love to see Virgil van Dijk, but it's a mad how there's a sliding doors moment where if he just heads the ball at goal instead of trying to be a bit too clever and square it, um, it's a, we might be talking about a different football match here. But... Liverpool still are trying to rebuild themselves. They're trying to rebuild confidence, and when you go a goal down at this point, they just don't. It just feels like they don't feel like they can get back into it. Or they, it's like, oh god, here we go again. The effort we're going to have to generate, and you know, we're left with a point. We're left with the position there with five minutes to go, where we're throwing the goalie up for corners to get a point away at Nottingham Forest. It's not good enough. And I and again look. I will caveat all of this because I'm not stupid. I, I, I can see Liverpool's injury situation. I can see that when you take Diogo Jota, Luis Diaz and Darwin Nunes out of the equation for Liverpool's forward line, um, then they're going to be less clinical. They're going to be less dangerous. They're going to cause less problems in attack. And, uh, other than, uh, yeah. But it doesn't stop my emotions, it doesn't stop my feelings, it doesn't stop the intense feelings of disappointment because they're in party mood, they're absolutely bouncing around that stadium. Horrible fans, by the way, genuinely horrible fans. Um, but they should be bouncing around the stadium because they've just beaten Liverpool, they've got promotion after all these years. And and they've just beaten Liverpool. They're, they're entitled to, to be absolutely buzzing with that performance. Dean Henderson, I really, I was really crossing my fingers and toes and hoping for another one of those Sheffield United away games where he throws one in for us, but he did the exact opposite when he needed to stand up for, the, for them. He did, and you know we were left with a 10-minute 10, 10 chase where we poured everything at them, nearly got caught with Allison up the pitch. Um, Milner put a block in late on as well. Great save, Malison, toward the, toward the end of the game as well. You know, we could have absolutely catastrophically fucked that there, and so in some regards, mercifully that we didn't. But yeah, one of them. When you're left with ten minutes to throw the kitchen sink at something, that speaks to a, that's a failure. That's a failure in the other eighty-five, not a failure in the final. In the final few, um, yeah, Liverpool didn't get it right today. And I, I, I'm understanding of the circumstances, but it doesn't make me happy about them. Um, anyway, guys, to dust themselves down, pick themselves up, and go to Amsterdam in the week. Uh, let's hope they're going to be livelier than probably most of us will be over there. Um, but yeah, shite, absolutely shite. Right, so uh, yeah, ultimately, welcome to 22-23 uh, Liverpool. Um, Breaking of hearts, uh, destroying of spirits. Um, we need it again. Just thought we turned the corner, but no, we need better players back and fit. We need luck with injuries, uh, and we need Liverpool to drag themselves through this period and get a, a run of games. Now the World Cup's closing in. We need to get as many points on the board as possible. Fuck Champions League football and fuck talking about league titles and all that kind of stuff. We can't get ahead of ourselves. The best we can ever hope for, if we're going to be this type of Liverpool, is that we're, you know is a fight, a flat out scrap for European footy. And we've got to have the players on the pitch ready for that because right now Liverpool, when they do things like this and they put in runs of form like that and lose games and draw games, they're more mid-table than they are top of the table, which is shite, let's be perfectly honest. Uh, look, if you need more help over this period, as always, uh, come and join us on Redmen Plus. Um, we've got a special podcast coming out, which I was really hoping uh, was going to be chock full of optimism. It's been 12 years, half a million subscribers on YouTube, me and Chris talking through some highlights of Redmen, not about the footy, just about the fun things that we've done and some of the weird things. So yeah, that's coming out on Sunday on YouTube and podcasting services. Check that out on any Anyway, listen, weekend ruined. Thank you, Liverpool. Tits. <laughs>